Hi, we've got a great service lined up for you today and we've got Dana Coley coming to speak to us and we've got some great kids stuff happening and hopefully you're going to have a great Father's Day with us. But right now to start off our service we've got Michael and Daniel are going to come and sing for us a new song. Stand up, get involved, join in and you're going to learn something new today. you to know as a father. Here's the first thing. Be your child's first teacher. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that they should go and they'll not depart from it. And so God wants us to learn to love our children and be teach them in the way of God. Don't let them learn for themselves. Talk to them. Teach them. Here's the second thing. Real men Dads exemplify what it means to be a Christian. Live as a Christian. Live in the way that God wants you to live and your children will catch on quickly. The third thing is this, provide for your family. And I know that's a tough word in times of lockdown, but you know, whether you're employed or unemployed, you can still provide spiritual food for your children. You can put that spiritual food on the table so that they learn what it is to follow the Lord and feed and grow in that way. Here's the fourth thing. Good dads love and discipline their children. And so 
Both of those words are important. We need to love our kids and we need to bring them discipline. And that way we shape and mould their character. And lastly, good dads spend time with their kids and they input into them so that it makes a real difference. And so right now we're gonna just finish off by praying. God, I pray that you'll bless every father. You'll bless every man in the church. God, I pray that all our men can be men of integrity, men of influence, and can help us raise both in the church and in our individual families, children that love and praise your name. Amen. God bless you. And we're going to carry on now with our Kids Corner. children welcome to destiny kids corner the story today is the beginning genesis 1 in the beginning the world was empty darkness was everywhere but god had a plan god separated the light from the darkness let there be light he said and the light turned on and he called the light day and the darkness night this was the end of the very first day Then God said, I will divide the waters. He separated the waters in the clouds above from the waters in the ocean below. He called the space between them sky. This was the end of the second day. Next, God rolled back the waters and some dry ground appeared. He made plants of many shapes and colours. He made mountains, hills and valleys. This was the end of the third day. God put a shining sun in the sky for the daytime, and he put a glowing moon and twinkling stars in the sky for the nighttime. This was the end of the fourth day. On the fifth day, God makes swishy fish and squiggly creatures to live in the ocean. Then God made birds to fly across the sky. On the sixth day, God made animals to creep, crawl, hop and gallop. Then from the dust, God made the most wonderful creature of all, a person. God named him Adam. On the seventh day, God rested. Hi, children. Hope you're having a wonderful time. Before I leave you, I'd like to say a prayer. Hold my hand, God. Lead the way. Help me to be good every day. Let me know what's wrong and right. Keep me safe day and night. Let me know what you have planned. Leave the way, God. Hold my hand. Amen. Hope to see you soon. Bye, children. Dear Lord, I'd just like to thank you for modern technology. For it's the thing that's been able to get with through COVID-19. And just thank the Lord for that. You, you bring them all together so that we're not like really missing like my services and that and we're getting to hear your word more frequently and uh but it'll be nice to see you soon in jesus name amen amen i've, I've got a little bit of a testimony because um a couple of weeks ago i almost lost my life um so i'm lucky to be here um sharing this uh, testimony with you because of um things went sadly wrong with us and someone must have been watching over us um, uh, and I was privately praying in silence to the Lord to um, keep me safe and uh, um, not take us away. It wasn't my time to go. Um, and I was praying for what the church remembered, what um, I learned uh, by coming to Destiny Church. And, uh, you know, uh, the... People who know us within the church, they'll know that I've, I've been uh, to hell and back, if you like. 
with um, all the medical conditions I have and I've pledged me faith within the church um, mm, Jesus. and in Jesus Jesus number one is a healer and I'm kind of like living proof of that because I was due for amputation in all kinds um, and I let Jesus do his great healing work in yes. us and I'm still here I just like to thank and you for I, I all hope that. to meet with these all again very soon and Jesus and pray for anybody else who's got conditions, whatever they are, whatever they may be, that the power of Jesus may heal you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I'd just like to pray that <clears throat> COVID nineteen sort of goes back down slowly and mm. like the shops like Yes, Lord. The, the don't take a step back mm. and that you've got power over it all. Mm. And I'd just like to uh, thank you for everything that you have done for like me and my family. Hi, everybody. Sorry I haven't been on, but I've been busy doing the train set. But here it is. Hi everybody, hope you're all keeping well and getting out. Hope to see you all soon. We made star I copied in traces oh. but I made it a little bit different. Uh, the spots at the back and, and I did no spots at the, the back and like, then I write my name at the back. And what's it say uh, on the I, front? And they did, um, it says, I did stuff Jesus, Jesus is coming. This, this at the front is that Jesus is coming and the, also the daughter and also the glue and things and also these, like these things. And when, I, the when I point it to the light, then it like glows. See, it's glittery. Oh, and it's made of paper. Yeah, I want to say hi to somebody. Me! She, he, hello, Tracy. Hello, hello everybody and hello Nani. We're coming to that point in the service right now where it's time to give. And so why not stir yourself to give today? Our offerings are important to the Lord. They make a real difference in extending his kingdom. And we want to give God our best. And so let's reach into our hearts today as we come to give. And I want to pray before we give. God, I want to thank you that when we give to you, Lord, it provokes something. It provokes faith in us, God, and it provokes joy in your heart. God, you'd love it when we make a sacrifice to you in that way. And so, God, we want to give you of what you've given us today. And I pray, God, that you'll bless our lives accordingly and that you'll do us good, God, from the bottom of your heart. God, I pray for people who need jobs right now, that you'll bless them. I thank you for those people that are in jobs that are getting promotions, getting increased blessing because your favour is on them. God, bless our lives. Help us to follow you and give in this way. In Jesus' name, amen. There are no limitations 
and what God can do. He is not bound by restrictions, pandemics or injustice. He is not bound by buildings or by city councils. Nothing can stop the advance of his kingdom. No matter where you are or what time zone you're in. In Europe, Asia, Africa, North, South America. Surge 20 is coming straight to you. A month-long experience full of incredible and life-changing teaching. And, and you, you are invited. invited. Nothing will stop the advance of God's kingdom. Okay, as I said earlier, we've got Daniel Acoli, who's got his own book out. Why not check out the details of that at the end of this service? A great devotional, 30-day devotional. But Daniel's going to come and share his heart with us as we start our new series about love and unity. And so open your hearts, get your Bibles ready, and let's give Daniel a heartfelt welcome as he comes to share from God's Word today. Hi everyone. Thank God for an opportunity to share again with God's people. It's, um, God is doing amazing things in our time. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is um, peace and unity. You know, there's no better time than now for, um, for us to show how united and how loving we are as a church. You know, so, and, and so this message is timely. And what I'm going to look at is how we can walk as a united people, as Christians, and also the importance of walking in unity and love. Okay, and then my anchor scripture is going to be from John 1 verse 4. And it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now, what, what the scripture essentially means is, especially the latter part which says, And his life was the light of men. It essentially means that um, the light was given to people. The life is um, Jesus, and it's portraying that Jesus was given to people. So you can simply say that Jesus loves people. He's a man of the people. He's a leader for the people. He wasn't given to the universe. He wasn't given to planet. He was given to men. So if you will, you could say um, Jesus is relational. He loves working with people. He's so com he, he loves, he loves, loves people. You know, and, that's, and so if you're a Christian, if you're someone that loves God, your number one quality is that you love people. You love relationship. You know, you're drawn to people. You're attracted to working with people. There's no loner in God. There's no introvert, if you will, when, when it comes to God. God expects us to reach out more to people, to be loving, you know, accepting of people. And you cannot be that kind of person if you're not a person of peace and unity. You need an unusual capacity to forgive. You need an unusual capacity to walk in peace and unity if you're going to walk with people. That's the truth. And so unity and love are a highlight of the Christian. The Bible says, and by this you will know that you are my children because you walk in love, because you love each other. So there's absolutely no greater way for us to pass the Christian message than to walk in love and unity. Okay, so I'm going to give us a background as to how essential unity is to us. The Bible says in, uh, in Genesis, um, God said, let us create man. We all know that that's the first time he used that pronoun, us. He, uh, when it came to creating animals, creating um, um, the fish, every, um, the, the trees, plants, he said, let there be, let there be. But when it came to man, the Bible says, he said, let us create man in our image. So what that means is God conferred with someone, with the Trinity, in this case, to create man. He had a meeting with um, some people. You know, he met, he, he, agree, he was in agreement with a couple others to, to create man. So we are a product of a harmonious, a harmonious discussion. We are a product of an agreement within a couple of people. Our foundation of, as humans is unity amongst people. We are born out of unity. And it's pretty much like how um, a wife and a husband come together and say, let us, let us create a baby. We we'll love a baby crying within the four walls of this house. So let us come together and make a baby. And a baby is a product of a loving harmony be between husband and wife. So 
um, love and unity is integral to our being. We, we cannot thrive without love and unity. We cannot be Christians without love and unity. Amen. So about, you know, the, the Bible is full of um, scriptures that highlight how important it, it is to walk in, in peace and unity. Jesus um, said, how blessed are you when you walk in peace and unity? Because you will be recognized as a true child of God. Imagine, it's not, you're not going to be recognized as a true child of God by your faith. He didn't say that. He didn't say you'll be recognized as a true child of God by how much you earn or how much, how loudly you preach. He says you will be recognized as a true child of God because of peace, because you make peace, because you foster unity. So it's very important that of every skill that we have to learn as children of God, that we grow in our capacity for peace and unity, for love, our, our, our capacity to, to walk in love. Amen. So God says, live in peace with everyone as much as you can. Live in peace, live in unity as much as you can. And the truth is, walking and living in peace and unity would demand an extraordinary capacity for you to forgive. So if you're someone that finds it difficult to forgive, you're going to find it difficult to walk in unity. If you're someone that finds it difficult to let go of the past of bitterness of hurt, you're going to have difficulties walking in um, unity and peace with everyone. So the first prayer I'm going to make before we continue with, um, with the message is this. God, give me an extraordinary capacity to forgive others. And the second prayer is, God, please give us an unusual capacity to, to love others. This is the pre prerequisite to uh, walking in unity and peace that you need. Amen. So, so basically, uh, we've well, just talked about why um, peace and unity is essential. We've talked about that background. So how do we grow our capacity to love and how do we grow our capacity to walk in unity? And all I'm going to say is that the Holy Spirit is the source of love, peace and unity. Amen. So to grow and walk in love, to walk in unity is by walking with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that love is a fruit of the Spirit. So for example, do you have to force an apple to grow on a tree? Is it, is it something that you, was it by some special tricks you made the um, apple fruit to form on the tree? No. While you were sleeping, the apple was growing. You didn't have to do any special thing to, to bring the apples on the apple tree. And in the same way, love is a fruit of the Spirit. We don't have to do any special thing aside walking with the Holy Spirit to um, experience the fruit of love. It's as simple as that. So we have to grow our capacity for walking with the Holy Spirit. We have to learn how to walk with more and more with the Holy Spirit so we can see more of the fruit of love and unity in our lives. I'm uncomfortable when Christians just want to sit down and say things like, okay, um, let's discuss how we can be more peaceful and how we can be more united. It's not a discussion thing. It's like saying, um, so let's discuss how that apple tree out there can bring apples this week or next year. You don't have a discussion about that. It's just natural. <laughs> you're going to be very, you're going to look so foolish if you're discussing how maybe a, a corn plant should bring um, more corn ears. It doesn't make sense. It's already planted. In the same way, it doesn't make sense talking about peace and unity. It's something that comes from walking with the Holy Spirit. So all you need to talk about is how can I walk more with the Holy Spirit? How can I place more manure? Or my relationship with the Holy Spirit, how can I water this plant of the Holy Spirit in my life to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit? So this is a period where we need to cultivate our, our relationship with the Holy Spirit more and more. Amen. So in this, in, 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 it's like I said at onset, it's a, a period where um, there's so much unrest in our society, there's, um, there's so much disunity and there's been no time better than now for the church to show her unity, her love for peace and her love for harmony. You know, and God is saying, I need more people to walk with me so that I can bring, I can, I can showcase in the point of our unity. So how do we really walk in unity? I know that's the part you want, so start hitting that like button. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to give you practical experiences on how, um, God, well, I'm not saying I've, I've got it perfectly, but... I'm just going to give some real life scenarios of, of where I had to um, cultivate unity and, and peace with people. So um, the first hits 
pretty close to home and that's with my wife you know earlier on in our marriage about six years ago it there was a point where we're practically having um arguments like every day we're arguing about practically everything and i couldn't understand what was really going on you know and, and then I, i'm 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 not really a confrontational person so then in the hit uh, in, in um during the arguments i might sometimes just walk off but that wasn't really helping i knew for for a fact that that was only complicating issues but then the talking was not also working sometimes we, we would agree on, on on something and then get right back to that same um, thing that caused the issue in the first place the next day you know so at some point uh, what, what so i thought how am I going to work this out? I love this person. I really want to be with her, but I can't really stand the, the constant arguments that we're um, I'm, I'm having with her. So what happened? Uh, we're church goers at that point, and after um, a particular service, we decided to start praying more in the spirit and studying the Bible more. And what happened was, as we started spending more time praying. If we're, I can't remember how much we increased our prayer time with the Holy Spirit by, but we definitely invested more in praying in the Spirit. And what happened is the arguments didn't really lessen, but then what happened at first is we found it easier to reconcile. I didn't feel that odd to walk off again. And that was my first win. That was our first win together. And as things went on and on, what I realized over the weeks, over the months, is that the arguments grew lesser and lesser. But the, the highlight was the fact that they were easier to resolve. And I, real, I, I could point back to the day when we decided to start praying more in the spirit and studying the Bible as a couple, as, as the defining point for our relationship. But that's just one example. The second example was also in church. I was um, a youth leader at the time and I had this person that I really didn't like. <laughs> Well, no, that's a confession. Well, I, I mean, I'm human. So I really didn't like this person. I, I thought he had an attitude and I thought he was egoistic. I mean, I had so, so many impressions um, about him and I thought, I suspected he also didn't like me as well. So so, so we really couldn't. And the, the thing is, we're expected to walk, um, walk on the um, church website and a couple of other graphic projects. But I found that our dislike for each other was getting in the way and I kept thinking, God, how am I going to um, resolve this? It's an embarrassment that a leader, I mean, it's a respectable thing to be a leader and then it's an embarrassment to have an issue with a member, you know, and it's getting in the way of your effectiveness. So what I started doing is praying for that guy. I didn't like him, but I started praying for him, started praying for myself and it, it felt like it's a cliche thing to do, but do you know that our relationship started improving? I was surprised one day he came and started asking me about my background and I found it easier to talk with him. And our relationship from that moment started growing stronger and stronger. And it's someone I worked with for over the next two to three years before I came over to the UK. That was a triumph of unity. That was a triumph of the Holy Spirit coming into my relationship with my colleague. You know, so it's 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 massively practical. It's it's not up there. It happens once you start walking in the spirit. Once you start praying in the spirit as frequently as possible, that wonders are going to happen for your relationship. So, the thing is, are you having difficulties with your spouse? Are you having um, difficulties with a particular child? Are you both speaking a different language? Are you having issues with someone in church? The first step is to, for you to realize that this is not right that it sh things should be better you should want to change and then the next step is to start praying praying in the holy spirit praying in tongues praying until you begin to feel the cogs of unity turning in your relationship with that person it works wonders it works wonders praying in the spirit with someone you don't agree with works wonders for your relationship amen you know we say this prayer and um, may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of God, and the last thing is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. The Holy Spirit is a fellowship maker. He is the relationship one. He's the expert relationship consultant. So if you're having any kind of issues with anyone, I give you a 100% guarantee that the Holy Spirit is a person to turn to for a healing of your relationship with anyone. So it might be a difficult thing to walk, with in, to walk in peace, it's, in fact, it's difficult. It's not might. It's a difficult thing. But when you walk in the Holy Spirit and allow him to lead you in unity and peace, it becomes an effortless 
or at least an easier thing to do. Amen. So I'm just going to lead us in a couple of prayers. The first prayer is, um, if you're not a Christian, if you don't believe in God, but you would like a new relationship with God, I'm going to ask you to receive Jesus. Jesus is the one that ushers the Holy Spirit into our lives. And so when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, what happens is you open yourself up to the Holy Spirit's work. That's, it is, that's a powerful, powerful thing that happens in the life of a believer, the entry of the Holy Spirit. So can we just say a word of prayer if, if you would like to receive the, um, Jesus? Um, so would you like to repeat after me? Lord Jesus, I thank you because you're my Savior. I thank you because you, you introduce your life into me when I accept you as my Savior. And I ask this moment that you come into my life. I want to walk in a relationship with you. I want you to transform my life. I'm having issues in, in different areas of my life. But now I want you to come into my life and change me. Make me more like you. Make me a more peaceful person. Make me a more loving and harmonious person in the name of Jesus Christ. And now the second prayer is for those that want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You've been a Christian and um, you, you love Jesus, but you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a unique member of the Trinity. You know, so you can actually know God and know Jesus, but not actually walk in, a, a walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. So when you ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life, He, he comes, you, you start a unique relationship with you with him that empowers you to love and walk in unity amen so if you want the holy spirit to fill your life um, join me in this prayer as well holy spirit please come into my life i need your fruits in my life i need your power to 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 um, transform my life so i've had fantastic things that you do and i would like to experience these things I would like you to heal my family. I would like you to heal my, my relationship with my friends, with um, everyone that I come across, with my colleagues at work, in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you because you make me an agent of your unity. Holy Spirit, thank you because you changed me into uh, an agent of your, your peace and harmony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, and, and on a final note, it's, it's just important to know this is um, Father's Day. And it's important as fathers that we are agents of unity in the home. We are the ones that unite the home. That's the godly responsibility that God has given to us. So um, as a father, it's, it's important that you, you, you walk in the spirit. As a mother, it's also important that you walk in the spirit because you need to walk with a husband. And it's 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 a, an incredible thing when we can also teach our children to walk with the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you and have a great day. Well, thank you for joining us today. If you'd like to spend a social time with us, why not find us on our Facebook link and we have a coffee meetup afterwards so we can all chink our coffee cups against the screen and enjoy some fellowship together. If you're busy just now, don't worry. Find us again at 8 p.m. this evening for prayers and then every day at noon and 8 p.m. where we look to meet and meet with God and meet one another's needs through prayer. In fact, why don't we just pray together right now? God, I want to thank you for our time together. God, thank you. It's precious to meet with you. I pray, God, that the things you've touched our heart with today, you will keep working on, you'll keep moving with, and that you'll bless our lives and help us every step of the way. Thank you, God. 
that we're on this journey together with you. And we want to bless you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we hope to see you really soon. God bless you. Have an amazing week and a great Father's Day if you're with your family in that way. God bless you and we hope to see you really soon.